Hi everyone, today I'm going to present our work, which is a collaboration between University of California Irvine and University of Miami and University of Turku, Finland. And here would be the outlines for today's talk. As you know, the board has been affected by COVID-19 and number of infected people in the United States is the highest globally. Within this infected population, those people with ARDS are in a more, more life-threatening circumstances, which results in a severe uh, respiratory uh, system failure. For the overview of ARDS, this is a kind of disease that causes the um, gas exchange in our lungs to be problematic and make it hard to uh, get the uh, oxygen from the air. And ARDS mortality is usually around 40% to 60%. However, this is not still clear that if the ARDS mortality gonna change for those patients that infected with COVID-19. Uh, luckily, uh, some studies show that we can use some vital signs such as heart rate and blood pressure to explode uh, early detection of different disease. Such biomarkers can be useful for identifying those patients with ARDS to see if they are infected with COVID-19 or not. And thanks to the advances uh, in IoT based devices, we can collect these kind of biomarkers continuously and in a free living condition daily. Uh, literature in uh, COVID-19 detection models mainly focuses on two different tasks. So we can categorize them to two different groups. The first one, they try to predict the presence of COVID-19 and the other kind of related work focuses on predicting the severity of COVID-19 for those that are already infected with COVID-19. One of the works for detecting COVID-19 uses a simple logistic regression model with a, a broad set of features, including demographic information, uh, symptoms, travel history, lab results to detect COVID-19. Uh, but there are some limitations with this work. So first one is that the number of features that they are using it's a lot, and some of these features only can be measured in clinical setups. Another related work for the COVID-19 detection uh, focuses on the clinical notes to extract symptoms mentioned by the patients uh, using natural language processing techniques. They have uh, done this analysis over different diseases, including COVID-19, and uh, the limitation of this study is that this is only based on symptoms that they are not using any vital signs, including heart rate and blood pressures. Second group of related work focuses on the uh, detecting severe, severe cases of those patients infected with COVID-19. They try to identify individuals with severe symptoms, but um, literature shows that relying on only symptom-based analysis is an ineffective strategy to qualify um, the uh, performance of the model. And also, they are using simple statistical models which cannot detect and capture complex patterns of data. Recognition of COVID-19 infections using big sensory data necessitate a novel modeling and analysis technique. So, as a, a summary of our contribution, we investigated the behavior of COVID-19 on ARDS patients by utilizing only three longitudinal features, including systolic and diastolic blood pressure and heart rate. And we compared individuals who developed ARDS with COVID-19 and without COVID-19 to see the differences. And um, we utilized uh, some neural networks and deep learning methods to distinguish between these two groups. The data set that they use for this study is called UC Quartz. Uh, this data set contained the information of uh, five different UC hospitals, including UC Irvine, UC San Diego, and UC San Francisco. And they include the EHR data, including uh, observations, lab tests, measurements, everything for only those people that tested with COVID-19. And for those inpatients, they have longitudinal vital signs that recorded every 30 minutes. For the participants, we only extracted those patients that tested between March 21st to April 1st. And uh, we were able to uh, detect 150 patients 
uh, that were hospitalized uh, with uh, ARDS diagnosis. Uh, we used two uh, standard IDs from SNOMED vocabulary. And since, uh, since the data was imbalanced, uh, we tried to resample those people with, uh, without COVID-19 to get a roughly similar number of uh, samples for each of these groups. And uh, uh, we tried to balance these kind of values that we had, this number of patients for different age groups. At the beginning, we used some uh, simple statistical analysis to compare uh, the feature distribution of uh, patients with COVID-19 and without COVID-19. In order to do so, we defined some simple statistical measurements, including mean, max, and uh, we utilized a point by serial correlation between these proposed uh, statistical features and the test results to compare the difference in distribution of these features for positive and negative groups. This correlation is very similar to Pearson correlation and is used when one of the variables is binary and the other variable is a continuous number. For our machine learning task, we randomly selected 80% of the patients as trained data and the rest as the test data. We developed our machine learning model using TensorFlow package of Python and in order to see the effectiveness of the prediction, we try to test the model on different time intervals on the test subjects. So in other words, we were interested to see the possibility of result prediction by, look, by only looking at a couple of samples. And for visualization purpose, we did TSNE uh, to visualize the data in two-dimensional space. So here is the structure of our uh, neural network layer. In order to capture the local information and as well as longitudinal information, we combined a couple of layers of one-dimensional convolutional neural layers and uh, LSTM layer. And at the end, we add some uh, dense layers to um, transform the prediction. This slide shows our uh, results for the statistical analysis. The table shows that uh, for some of the uh, these uh, statistical features, we had significant positive correlation. Uh, for example, the mean of uh, heart rate um, and the maximum value of heart rate, they had a, a huge correlation with the test results. Although uh, the mean HR, for example, had a significant, significant correlation, we tried to visualize, visualize the distribution of the data for negative and, and positive samples for different age groups. And you see there is a huge overlap between these results. And so therefore detecting people infected with COVID-19 would be challenging using these statistical features. On the other hand, the neural network was able to capture this nonlinearity between the features that we had from the data. So it reached uh, the accuracy as high as 79% and uh, 87 for precision and 84 for recall and 81 for area under the K. And also we tested the model with different uh, test sizes with different time periods for the test data. And here is the result for uh, different time intervals that we had. This figure shows, for example, there is an increase in the model's accuracy at the beginning, starting from 52, and it reaches as high as 78% on the 12th day. In order to visualize the data, we use TSNE at the dense layer with 100 neurons, and we try to uh, summarize these features to two-dimensional space. And it shows that uh, using extracted feature but deep neural network, the positive and negative cases are almost separatable. Monitoring blood pressure and heart rate would be a useful strategy for those who are living in collective uh, communities, such as nursing houses. As CDC mentions, less than 1% of the America's population are living in these facilities, but 36% of the US COVID deaths were from these uh, communities. Also, there is a discussion about the time that COVID-19 arrived in the United States. By reviewing the data prior to the first report case in US, we can validate the presence of COVID-19 in our community as well. Moreover, related work focuses on the lab measurements and symptoms. We only consider two easily accessible features, including uh, blood pressure and heart rate, that nowadays, thanks to the IoT devices, we can capture them uh, in everyday uh, remote settings. 
And finally, thanks for your attention. Please don't hesitate to send your questions to my email. Thank you.